everybody, my name is Trinity and I'm here with the Minnesota Zoo to talk to you a little bit about habitats and ecosystems. But before we get started, there are a few important words that we need to learn. The first word we're going to discuss is biome. Biome is an area on the planet that is identified by the climate, animals, and plants that live there. And while we're going to have seven biomes that are within this lesson, we're going to focus on one in particular and that's the grassland biome. The way you can know if you're in a grassland biome has to do with the temperature, which ranges from negative four to 86 degrees on average. They have between 19 and 35 inches of annual precipitation or rainfall. And while you won't find many trees, there are many different types of grasses and prairie flowers. And grasslands can be found on every continent except Antarctica. Within those biomes, are several different types of habitats. And a habitat is a place within a biome that supports the needs of an animal. And the basic needs for every animal is food, water, and shelter. An ecosystem is a little bit different from a habitat because the ecosystem looks at a community of interacting living organisms and their physical environment. So we're looking at the plants and the animals but we're also looking at the physical environment around them, such as sun, lakes, rivers, oceans, uh, rocks, anything else that's within their environment, even if it's not alive. Today, we're in the grassland biome in a very important habitat, the Great Plains. This area runs right through the middle of the United States in places like North Dakota, South Dakota, and even Western Minnesota. It is known for its expansive prairies and fertile soil. And some of the animals you might meet here include pronghorns, seen here behind me, bison, prairie dogs, several birds of prey, and coyotes. We're gonna meet a few of these animals and learn more about how biomes, habitats, and ecosystems are connected. Small rodents, like mice and rats, play an important role in many ecosystems and can be found on every continent except Antarctica. Rats are plentiful in the prairies of the Great Plains. Their job is a simple one. They are a main source of food for many types of animals found in this habitat. While their job may be to allow other animals to eat, they are also very social and highly intelligent. Rodents have been known to outsmart the predators that chase them using well-planned hiding places and intricate escape routes. Bull snakes are experts at utilizing the tall prairie grasses for camouflage and rely on rodents like rats for survival as they make up much of their regular diet. These snakes are one of the largest found in Minnesota, growing up to six feet in length. Unlike rattlesnakes, who they are commonly mistaken for, this species is non-venomous and are very helpful to the farmers that share this habitat, taking advantage of this habitat's fertile soil. Bull snakes help control the rodent population in the fields allowing for more crops to be harvested. The rats, bull snakes, and farmers all depend on each other. The next animal we're going to meet not only relies on mice along with bugs for food, but they also rely on another animal in their habitat to help supply them with shelter. This is a burrowing owl. And while they are capable of digging their own burrow, these small owls depend on abandoned prairie dog towns to call home. Burrowing owls are solitary birds, but live in communities out of convenience. These pre-made burrows create shelter and safety, and living in large groups provide extra sets of eyes to watch out for predators, like snakes and larger birds of prey. The history of black-footed ferrets are an amazing story about how ecosystems rely on all animals and their physical environment to survive. In the early 1900s, agriculture was booming in the Great Plains. One big problem farmers and ranchers were having involved the expansive prairie dog, dog towns that impacted their ability to expand their farmland. To solve their problem, farmers and ranchers, along with the local government, exterminated prairie dogs from the ecosystem. The black-footed ferret, whose diet relies on prairie dogs for survival, lost their food source and were declared extinct in 1979. Several years later, 18 wild individual ferrets were captured and a breeding program was initiated to bring back and reintroduce the ferret population to their native habitat. While the ferret population has increased, there are still less than 500 in the wild today. Scientists say that for the species to have recovered, they need at least 3,000 individuals back in their native habitat. Black-footed ferrets are still endangered, 
but without the hard work and dedication from conservationists and zoos that assist with breeding programs, there wouldn't be any black-footed ferrets alive today. We remain cautiously optimistic that ferrets will make a full comeback in the future. Every habitat has a variety of ecosystems that work together for all living things to be able to thrive in their physical environment. Ecosystems can be impacted by natural disasters, such as tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, and floods. But humans can impact ecosystems as well. Pollution, destroying natural habitat for housing or commercial use, and climate change are altering them as well. We can all do our part to help ecosystems thrive by keeping our land and waterways clean, recycling, and walking, riding bikes, or taking public transportation to get around when able. I hope you enjoyed meeting some of the animals and learning about one of the many habitats found on our planet. Next time you're out in nature, think about how the environment and the animals interact in order to survive. Don't forget, how we interact with the habitats around us impact the plants and animals that call that place home. And next time you're here at the Minnesota Zoo, you can visit some of these grassland animals while you're out on the Northern Trail.